Hi there, I'm Magister in Black, and this is the final chapter on Maddening Mode. There is only one way to stop this. We... We must... Damn it! We have no choice but to kill the Immaculate One! To kill Rhea! Alright, let's take a look at the opposition for this final map here. We'll start with Rhea. And she only has 51 attack and 34 attack speed, which is not that problematic, but she does have 39 crit, which might potentially be slightly problematic. She does have 15 base attack on her crest stone, and if I can get the Joy-Con to stop drifting, she has 5 might on her staggering blow, which she'll actually start spamming once we take out all of the white beasts. She does have 70% damage reduction from her barrier and an additional 50%. Um, ancient Dragon Skin, which means that basically she'll take 85% less damage from anything unless I break her barrier, so that's kind of annoying. She also has Counter Attack, so no outranging her, and her other abilities don't really make that much difference other than Vantage, Defiant, Strength, and Miracle, which will unlock as I take her HP Wars down. Miracle is kind of a thing to catch you out if you're a little bit too aggressive and don't play defensive enough, but it's probably going to be fine to work around. Defiant Strength is something that we should be able to bypass by blitzing her HP bars down and not going through that low HP threshold. And then Vantage is just one final thing to watch out for if uh, you're playing a little too aggressively and not paying enough attention to your defenses they can catch you out. Now we do have a bunch of white beasts that we have to defeat and they are faster than Rhea and have a similar amount of offensive power. But they do have a weakness to bows. They also do get Miracle on that last HP bar. And they're also weak to dragon effectiveness and beast effectiveness, which means breaking their barriers is pretty straightforward, and then they don't have all that much HP. They can fly around and have pretty significant range and attack power, though. So, still have to be a little bit careful with them. They only have 124 hit, though, so they won't be able to hit Petra or Byleth. Then we have the Golems. I hate these things, and the reason that I hate them is because they have Swordbreaker Plus, and that means that uh, being able to take a hit from them is not guaranteed with my Sword Evasive units. So what I typically like to do is only take out one of them and then avoid the rest of them, because they're kind of a hassle to hit and kind of a hassle to deal with. They also do a bunch of magic damage, and most of my units don't have very good magical defense, and their Staggering Blow is also quite problematic because it's got an absolutely huge AoE and a colossal amount of might at 23. Then we have, you know, a bunch of relatively fast Paladins at 37 attack speed, and we've got Heroes with 47 attack speed, and then we've got some Great Knights which are actually slow at only 22, and the enemies here have like 60 attack or something like that. Down here we have the real problems though. We've got Falco Knights, and they have 63 attack and 53 attack speed, plus they can fly and have 8 mobility. These are probably the biggest threats on the map, and I think there's three of them. One over here as well. And they also come with my favorite skill for enemies to have Sword Raker, so there's a little bit of Sword Evasive hate here, but that's fine. We should still be able to take them out as long as we play carefully. Snipers are fine. Now. The enemy uh, generals or commanders here all have Miracle, and they all have sort of unique skills. This one has Dark Magic range up, which actually won't help all that much because that's still 1-3 to three range, which means I can still arrange this Gremory with like a Luna, and 2-shot it with Lysithia, I think. And this one's also pretty slow, so this one's not going to be that much of a problem, although the Miracle might be a little inconvenient. And she does move. Then we've got... I think this Bow Knight is another general, or this Sniper. And he's got a Brave Bow. And he's also got a really cute ability set up here. He's got Bow Range plus 1 and then Bow Range plus 2, which means he has a bigger range than a Bow Knight actually would, even though he's a Sniper. Plus he's got Miracle. But at least he doesn't have Vantage or Poison Strike. There's a bunch of Physic Healers hiding back here, which uh, I'm going to have to take out. And they all have Miracle as well, but that's a class skill. There's a 
Rave Sword enemy here with 38 attack speed and Poison Strike and Miracle Advantage, so... Quite a few really nasty enemies on this chapter that I'm going to have to deal with. And then I think... This one's not a general? I thought there was a general on this side somewhere, but I guess there's not. And then... I will want to get to this heal tile plus and stop the white beast from infinitely spawning here as quickly as possible. And then remove all of the enemies that are going to come my way, take out all the white beasts, take out one golem, and proceed to probably break various barriers, and then splits her HP bar down as quickly as possible with units that will either be able to avoid or survive her constant spam of Horror Frost. And I might also have to take a little bit of a detour to have some units take out these three healers, so that way the damage sticks. But all in all, I think this should be manageable, though it'll probably involve a little bit of risk involving dealing with these Falco Knights. Surrounded already, it seems. The White Beasts are those in whom Rhea's blood flows strongest. Until we get rid of them, we will not be able to so much as touch Rhea. Damn! After all that's happened, why do we have to kill Lady Rhea? Alright, here we go. This is it. So the first order of business is getting to this heal tile plus and cutting off the enemy White Beast reinforcements before they can cause us any problems. So in order to do that, I'll do my best. I'm going to use a stride gambit. I owe you. That helps. And I'm going to follow that by warping Petra. Like... And then Petra with the stride buff should be able to reach the tile. Now, I've done something a little bit wonky here, and I've given her a silver lance, because these enemies have Swordbreaker. And while they actually have an incredibly low chance of hitting her if she's using a sword, I think it's something like 4%, they actually will be able to avoid her attacks a lot easier if I give her a sword, so I'm going with the Silver Lance here so that I actually get a chance to get her attack and kill. Let us turn our attention to the Immaculate One. This is it. The final battle. Rhea! Not even I have seen this form. Well, that's something, isn't it? A shame we must kill her. Consider the research potential. And that actually ends up buffing the existing white beasts, but it's only a small buff. It increases their magic and defense. So, since their attacks are considered magical, that means that terrain bonuses from forests don't actually help you at all when you're fighting them. Now these enemies do have a 13% chance of hitting Petra for non-lethal damage with their weapons, but Petra should have a pretty decent chance of counter-killing them. Now, the other problem is I've got a bunch of squishy units here, and I've decided to bring, you know, Marianne and Lynn Harder along, along with Mercedes, because I didn't have 12 full power units in order to uh, fill out my roster for this chapter. And I do need to Let's get myself some room quick. to maneuver here. So to do that, I'll use Dark Spikes with Lysithia. I've got no time for mercy. And that gives us a little bit of breathing room. Now, there are these enemy horses over here, which are probably going to pull everything from this side of the map towards me if I stay in their range. So, best thing I can do here is probably bait them with someone who's likely to kill them. I think with my list pretty high crit rate, that should be okay. I also need to stay out of range of pretty much all of these enemy flyers, so that I don't end up getting killed by surprise, and they just sort of fly over to my units who can't outscape them and then get killed. I also want to be very careful of the enemy sniper ranges. So that doesn't really leave me with all the many places that I can actually move on this map, at least not safely.
what I can do is I can put my flyers into position up here, and I can pull Linhardt out of range here using drawback so that he'll be safe. Ready for anything. At your service. Ready when you are. I'll cut through. I do this for all of us. And then we should be safely out of range here. I can actually get a hit and run off here, so I think I will. Since I can't guarantee a hit either way, I might as well go for the big damage. The Immaculate One. We cannot afford to lose here. Whoever our foe may be. And I had a small chance of hitting Petro, but it missed. We got lucky there. Just need two more miss or one more miss really. No use. We got a 35% hit rate with the lance, which is not very good. So I might actually want to switch back to the sword, because even though her hit rate will probably be cut in half, she'll be a little bit safer from the white beast. And the white beasts are starting to move out. As is this enemy. I hit. Nope. Didn't get the kill. Which probably means he's going to get healed to full by physic healers. Had I room to grow? And the Ashai Sword self damage is actually helpful for Byleth because she has Define Avoid equipped. Which means that her evasion should be able to match or exceed Petra's actually. And it looks like the whole top side of the map is also going to come for me. No kill there either. So there's quite a few enemies that I'm going to have to eliminate on the right side there. Appreciate it. Apologies. Looks like some of my damage stuck at least. Alright, so the Silver Lance isn't working out as well as I was hoping it would. But what I can do here is go into this forest. It won't help me survive the uh, enemy white beast here, because he'll ignore it, but it will help me avoid taking hits from these enemy Falco Knights. It's basically the same as using an alert stance. I'll throw on the Killing Edge so that way the White Beast is less likely to hit me, and I'll heal Petra out of the danger range so that way if she takes one hit she will survive. Then I have to deal with all of these enemies over here, and there are quite a few of them. So... At your service. I'm not going to heal by left. By left actually wants low HP for Defiant Avoid, Let's make this quick. but I am going to use Dark Spikes in order to eliminate one of these enemies here. Probably go for the one with Swordbreaker. I've got no time for mercy. Right, that takes care of one enemy. I've only got 40 left. What's my strategy? And if I crit here, I will get this kill, and it is risk-free, so I'll do this with my left. Allow me to demonstrate. I must lead them well. Well done. You're really right, that tough. takes care of two enemies. Now surviving the rest of this is going to be a little bit tricky. I might need to throw up an impregnable wall. I do this for all of us. I'm also probably going to need to take out this enemy flyer one way or another. Hit rates aren't great. Let's say I go with Hunter's Volley. Hit rates are a little better. So if I move someone like, let's say Linhart, into range to attack from three range. Then I actually will increase the hit rates. Might as well try to do a little chip damage as well. Can I use 
this off the battlefield? So I think we're at 91%, 100% with curve shot, but Hunter's Volley is at 91%. Yep, so hopefully this works. Takes care of that. So this enemy is a holy knight, which is problematic, because that means that if I put Felix here and use Impregnable, I will need to do something to keep him alive. I suppose I could just draw him back. But if I can kill the holy knight, that's for even better. Let's see about that. Well, he's got crit on me, and quite a lot of it. I could silence him, and then maybe go in for some kind of a Ravax attack, but that doesn't look like that'll be reliable either. So, drawback seems like a fine play. And then I guess I will try to get some damage in on this Great Knight here. Since I won't be able to get the kill with the Brave Axe, and I kind of want to conserve it for the end, I'll probably go with Killer Axe. No openings, I'll make one. Nice. If we get the double crit, we get a kill. If not, we'll do a lot of damage. I have uh, messed up my positioning here a little bit. So I'm going to have to reposition Ferdinand as well. Either that or silence the Holy Knight. I think the Holy Knight should be fine. But Marianne was in the way of the one space I could have moved Ferdinand into in order to have a drawback space available for Felix to use Impregnable Wall. It gets kind of annoying and complicated when you are sort of chatting together repositioning combat arts in order to keep people alive. But I think we might be able to take out this Great Knight. And if I go here... We're one damage short, so I'm going to have to retreat back into this space. And that would also require me to silence the Holy Knight. So Iron Axe will give him a counter-attack chance. Silver Axe should kill him. It's guaranteed to kill him, even if it's Miracle procs, because I'll double him. You're all going down. Can't pull back yet. I'll do my best. Now I do have to silence this Holy Knight. That worked out. And then I will use Impregnable. And that will keep everyone alive. It might be worth throwing around some meteors. Just to get rid of some enemies no that are fighting. going to be problematic here. Won't really do anything to the flyers, which are the biggest problem. But if I can chip down this enemy's HP, that might be pretty helpful. Oh. If I can't get the kill, the Physic Healers will just heal him right back up. So it may actually be best to just heal here. I owe you one. Ready when you are. So Apparently the display for enemy range when they only have a gambit available to them is a little bit odd. So Ingrid could potentially take a gambit if I put her here, even though that space shows up as blank on the overlay. A little bit curious. Metra's going to be attacked, it should miss.
That should be attacked twice more. And both of them should not hit. But our counterattacks are probably going to miss as well. Time to deal with those flyers before they reach me. I think that the self damage will do more to me than the actual attacks will here. Almost a half HP. It's a little bit of a waste of a durability. Sad to see a one damage crit. But at least they waste the physic healing that one damage. Then we've got flyer coming our way here. We've got more flyers coming our way as well. So we're running out of spaces to uh, safely stay in. actually make an attempt here at doing some damage. As long as I heal Petra, this will be fine. Alright. At least it did something. Now if I were to remove the attack ranges of these enemies here. Looks like I'm still going to be completely covered in enemies. So I'm going to have to gambit this white beast in order to actually have enough room to work with here. I should probably also try to deal with these three enemies as well. That is quite likely to hit, but I don't think she'll do very good damage against anyone here. Looks like she does have the capacity to take out this enemy Gremory. So, silence into that would probably not be a bad play. And if we get really lucky, we can do the 8x attack with aggressive index procs here. But I doubt it's going to happen. Pretty good, huh? I think Bernadette has the highest theoretical damage of any unit in the game because aggressive index allows her to do 8 attacks. Whereas every other unit can only do up to 4, even with their huge damage boosts. So the archer should be safe to take out with pretty much anyone. And if I'm going to be attacking him, I might as well fish for crits. Let's start with Sunder. There goes most of his HP. Could probably chip him with Ingrid and get the kill. Although Ingrid can probably hit this enemy with a gambit and force it to attack her and that'll be safe. Witness my resolve. So that's fine. I probably need to use Byleth in order to kill this holy knight. Unless I'm going to do some kind of hit and run with Ferdinand or something. That's a little bit sketchy. Might be able to use Lysithia. So getting her into range might be problematic. 
There's just so many enemies around, it's hard to even see where I'll be attacked by what. You still have to take out the hero as well, so I might just have Lysithia do that instead. If I send Byleth up here... Looks like I don't have to worry about anything particularly nasty with a really high hit rate hitting her. Looks like it's just going to be the sniper. Byleth should be able to avoid that. So let's see about killing this hero. We do 51, 59, what about Hades? 64. Luna gets me up to 70, so I'm going to need someone to help out no matter what. Leonard will do just fine as long as he hits. Poison Strike, so I'll probably do that with my asthma. I might also be able to do it with Dorothea at this point. A little bit short. It's done. One less problem to worry about. Thirty-five to go. So Dorothea can actually probably get into a fight with the Holy Knight and acquit herself just fine. Now her damage is a little bit lacking. Put me in there. Caspar can definitely attack from safety point blank here though. We can even guarantee the kill. Who's next? Get in line. That's just fine. Might need a little bit of healing before I do this. And then there's a small chance he'll grab me as well. It doesn't heal her all the way up to full at least, so if I get hit, as long as I don't get crit, I'll actually be in pretty good range for the Curse to Shia Sword giving me Viance and upping my Void by 30. He missed. No crits. There is always more to learn. So I'm gonna have to follow that up with probably an attack from Ferdinand. But I do have a support bonus going, so my odds of hitting should be a little bit better than they were. 89, that's reasonable. A boon for our future. There's a small chance that Byleth will get hit here, but she should be mostly fine. And I'll heal the Caspar. Let's see. So Ray's going to use Horror Frost. She has some pretty colossal range. But oh, it missed. The hit rate on it's not that good. Is all right. She just needs to avoid one more attack. Maybe next time. No use. Yeah, unfortunately, those Pegasus Knights have such high avoid that, uh, or Falco Knights rather. That Petra won't be able to hit them very reliably. This is fine as long as he doesn't crit. A little bit risky. And 
And here come the flyers. And I think I'm out of time to deal with some of them. No chance. Watch and learn. So that at least went as planned. And even more enemies are coming our way. And they're healing the White Beast. So this turn we have map covered in enemies to deal with. The hit rate on that climbs significantly. And if I do hit, and I do crit, that's a kill. Uh, the odds aren't that bad, I'll try it. Well, maybe next time. If I can armor break this white beast this turn, I'll be in pretty good shape. But I'm probably going to need to do something to... Number one, get out of these enemy ranges. Number two, kill this Falco Knight. Number three, gambit this white beast. Looks like if I take their ranges off, I still have not much space that I'll be able to move around in. Guarantee that I gambit with Ferdinand, and Ferdinand has 14 resilience versus 54 attack. That's a lot of damage if he gets doubled, which I'm pretty sure he does. So that's probably not safe to do. Dorothy has 40 resilience, so she can actually take being doubled by a white beast just fine. So can Marianne or Mercedes for that matter. Or, uh, they would if they had more HP anyway. Oh yeah, Dorothea can do it fine, so. Either her or her Linhart are actually just fine to leave over here all by themselves. As long as we do take out this Falco Knight. Now we're out of range with Bernadetta, so we can't count on our easy damage to take out the Falco Knight. Which means we're gonna have to rely on Lysithia, I think. And with a big hefty Lunatome, she'll be able to take out almost all of its HP, if she hits. That went well. Seeing as Linhart does not have an offensive gambit, he's probably the way to go for doing the last little bit of damage to the Falco Knight. But in order to get in range, I have to put him in the Holy Knight's range. It's not ideal. So I might want to do a hit and run here instead. The odds are reasonable. I'm going to need a little bit more damage there. I'll do my best. So I'm going to pull Marianne back to here. And then I'm going to heal Ingrid. You saved me. Then I will put... Fighting. Dorothea right here. And I'll try to kill this enemy with Sagite. We got lucky in that Winning hit. Is what matters. So that's good. Let's care of our main problem here. Now, this enemy white beast can kill pretty much anyone who's over here unless I do something. So, if I were to throw Felix up there and use an impregnable wall, the problem is I wouldn't be able to get him out of there. Not ideal. At your service. And if I were to do that and then put Linhart up there as well, we might do better. You're amazing. What's my strategy? 
I'll cut through. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, so he's gonna get caught, but these three should be safe. Even with all the attacks coming away. So I think what I'm gonna have to do to get him out of here, because my positioning is so bad, is I'm gonna have to blow a warp. And then he'll probably go for Linhart, but Linhart should be fine, as long as it doesn't get crit. Then we have half a tile and one and a half tiles. So I'm going to have to use one gambit and then two attacks in order to break this enemy white beast's barriers. Ready when you are. So I'll start that off. Let's do our part. Our strategy is solid. I think it's fine to leave Ingrid right where she is. I do this for all of us. And then I can outrange with having an exhaustible or a brave bow here. I could also probably go with a silver bow with a hunter's volley. That's pretty likely to work. And it'll break this barrier. And I can follow up with Ferdinand, I think. Or Caspar. Whichever one of them is still available. We got the armor break, so we don't have to worry about this one. Might as well go for as much damage as possible. That's a win for everyone. Not a great level up. But we got through his first HP bar anyway. And that's just fine. I don't think there's really that much I could do to advance my position here with my left. But I might need her over here. I will tear you down. How much range does she have? Like six? That should probably miss Petra. No use. Try hard. Keep missing those counterattacks. Eventually one of them's gonna hit. And when it does, I'll finally be able to set Petra loose on the enemy. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. Linhart should be okay. And I think Poison Strike won't activate because this is the enemy's turn. It's a little bit unfortunate. Here's another flyer. But we do have Lysithia right there. Mercedes is dodging like a champ. She dodged all four of those. Like uh, flipping a coin and getting heads four times in a row. So I'm uh, definitely running out of places to hide. And I think that Mercedes has uh, gotten herself into quite a bad situation here. We might be able to bail her out. 
Except it's probably going to take two units to take out this Falco Knight unless I can bring Bernadetta around. And even if I can bring Bernadetta around, that might not be the best idea. Fifty-five percent hit rate at this range. Not ideal. I also probably want to take out this beast. So, I suppose it's not necessary. This beast I either want to armor break or only leave units with high resistance left in its range. And then these three enemies are all very problematic and going to have to be dealt with, but I think I'll start with something a little simpler. I will and I'll try to kill this enemy with Petra again. And if we get the crit, we're in good shape. If not, oh well. No use. So I could potentially gambit these three. You have a resonant lightning. And I'm not afraid to use it. Now the hit rate on it is not that great. Which is the one unfortunate thing. I do have a poison tactic with my left, too. And this wouldn't be a bad time to use it, actually. Now, that does mean that I'm still going to get attacked by the Holy Knight with Braxis, unless I silence him with Marianne. But between these two units, we can neutralize all three of these threats. And that should be okay. And since this one's only going to attack once, and he's only going to do 59 base damage, and we've got pretty good resistances across the board here. As long as we heal Linhart, this should be pretty much under control. As long as we take out this white beast. I want to gambit this one as well. Seems like a decent plan. I'll have two, okay? Now's our chance. And there goes my one poison barrel. Alright, I'm going to take out this white beast if I can this Ready turn, so... Anything. Start this off by moving Ferdinand next to him, and using the Assembly Gambit, which I believe pulls him out of space. I'll tell backwards. So if I'm going to do this, I better make sure that I do it right. I think this should be fine because Casper will still be in range and then I can close in with Ingrid and do a triangle attack. Put the plan into action. You can I'll wait right in its range, that way we can still do the triangle attack. Now I will go attempt this, and as long as I crit, I'll get the kill, and if I fail to crit, I'll probably survive. I'll end this quickly. Nice. Great level up. Hopefully I'll be more useful now. I'm finally grasping this. We bet I didn't leave a skill slot open for land script plus 10 there. I'll leave Ingrid where she is so that way I can get in here with Felix if I need to. I do this for all of us. Then I think I can attack from three range with Bernadetta. I have to be careful about which three range I attack from. And if I use, let's say, a silver bow with Hunter's Volley, that'll leave him on very low HP. And I can do that completely safely. And I don't think Felix can get this kill because he has a chance of procking a miracle. And counterattack will kill Felix. 
so I might need to do something from range first here. Looks like I won't be able to uh, quite get him down to one. So I would probably have to use Lysithia there. Make this quick. I could definitely do that with Lysithia. I will not die yet. More magic is always welcome. And this enemy will only use a single attack here, so that's fine. I do probably want to gambit him with someone who would be beneficial to do so with, like Dorothea with her high resistance. I would say Linar, but Linar doesn't have a offensive gambit. So I think I'll pull Dorothea down this way. See if I can gambit here. Seems like an awful waste. But I guess it's necessary to protect my units. So, anything done in the service of keeping units alive is worthwhile. Don't mind getting my hands dirty. So he'll go for Dorothea, it'll only do 19 damage. It'll probably miss Byleth as well. At your service. And then... I'm going to move out of range here, so that way I can't actually be attacked with uh, Abraxas by Mercedes here. And I'll heal in hard. Really helpful. Awake. Looks like Abraxas will do 38 damage to Byleth, and Byleth should survive that. It's also not very likely to hit in the first place, and she'll get a counterattack chance, so that's fine to leave as it is. I could potentially silence this Holy Knight, but I'd rather get the advantage of uh, killing this enemy on the enemy phase, so I have one less thing to deal with here, hopefully. I'm going to leave Linar out of enemy range here. It would be best to use a heal instead of a physic if I can. But since I can't quite reach, it looks like I'll use a physic. I could probably attack with Felix here, but he'd probably get stomped. Although. I do have the cover of a stun, so I can get away with it. I think if I move him... I can't quite reach this open tile, unfortunately, so... This is as good as it's going to get. I could go for the Sunder, hope for that 19 crit. Oh. Well, at least it did contributory damage. It'll make taking out this first HP bar a little bit easier. I'll do my best. So it did successfully chain stun him. I'll probably just keep moving Marianne further away from the enemy. Yes! I owe you one. Put me in there. I'd actually be able to take a free hit with Caspar here. Summer X is probably about as well as I'll do, so I'll take it. And the poison damage ticks. Petra's fine. 
Even if the enemy Falco Knight hits her, there's nothing to follow up with. Eventually she'll get another crit and kill that one too. Dorothea will survive this. And here come more enemies. If this hits, it's not a problem. But if this hits, he's dead. And there we go, we got the crit. This could turn the tides. So that's one less enemy to deal with. And they're gonna heal this swan right back up because they can. I'm good now. It's going to be a little bit difficult to take out this Falcon Knight, I think. While also keeping our other units safe. I will prepare. But down here, things are as dead simple as they've always been. <coughs> he says almost full HP, but not quite. I do have three flyers that I can turn against him. I think we're out of the hero's range for this turn, so... We have to deal with this Great Knight, this Falco Knight, and this White Beast in some way, shape, or form this turn, and we'll be in good shape. I think if I open by attacking this White Beast and breaking one of his barriers, that'll be a good start. And then I can use the chain stuns from there, eventually break all of those barriers without taking a counterattack. Or even a bow, maybe from the convoy. Taking out this enemy Falcon Eye is going to be a little bit more difficult, I think. Especially because I'll have to step into enemy pseudo bow knight range here. Thanks to that sniper. So if I use, let's say, Herb Shot, looks like I won't be able to reach. Let's say step into enemy range here. That's going to mean that I'll have to use an impregnable on her. Then she doesn't get killed by a brave bow. And to do that, I'll also have to sit in a brave bow range. So, uh, I might have to warp her or something. And I don't really have anyone who can use warp anymore because Lysithia is going to have to attack. Alright, so if I'm going to take out this Falco Knight, which is probably the biggest threat for me, I will probably have to do... Some kind of a combination of Lysithia, Luna, and then either Dorothea or Ferdinand following that up. Now the Luna hit right here isn't particularly great, but it's not dreadful. And we lucked out. And from here, I can move Dorothea right here. And if we try Sejite, we've got a 72% chance that this works, which is more probable than not. This is my stage now. All this power just to survive. Excellent, and that takes care of that. Now. I'm not sure if I can use Enclosure on a beast, but if I can, that might be really useful here. What's my strategy? I can also probably put Byleth in this forest and go for an attack here. And if I get a crit, this will kill. It does have a miracle though, so I might need to follow that up with maybe Bernadetta or a flyer. Allow me to demonstrate. Yeah! Come watch and learn. It's over. Another victory. 
so reliable. Excellent. And then, as we can see, this hero cannot actually hit by left, so she's perfectly safe. All right. So in order to take out this enemy white beast's barriers this turn, armor break him. I'm going to have to use a stride gambit. Thanks for helping. You're amazing. That should allow Caspar and Ferdinand to get to the bottom of him and out of range again safely with their gambits. Exploit their weak spot. There we go, now I'm out. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I get five more moves, so that should be fine too. This could be crucial. This better work. Here I can attack with Felix, and I better make sure I hit. And that keeps the chain sun rolling. And then one more hit from range and we'll be able to break his last barrier. So I think I'll use Linhart for that. Excalibur will actually do decent damage. But pretty much anything will do. I guess I'll go for Excalibur just for the effectiveness. Now he's armor broken. I might actually be able to get this with Mercedes. She doesn't need to do much damage at all, just a little bit. That'll do, as long as she hits. I don't know what happened. Alright, so there's another HP bar gone. Then I can move in here and it looks like I can't quite do the triangle attack. Which is a shame. If I'd gotten Caspar and put him where Felix was, I wouldn't have been able to get the barrier down, though. But that's alright, I can get a free attack in with Ingrid, so I will. Might as well try for a crit. out of enemy range here. And I can put Bernadette over here. I think Hunter's Volley with even the Iron Bow will do this. And there we go, we're on the last HP bar here. Ready to kill him next turn. Should miss Petra. Should also miss. No hit. And here comes the hero. He'll probably get crit to death. Sword break. Shame. I wasn't even able to get Violet's HP down far enough to uh, rock defiant. Appreciate it. Thanks. Well, 
that undid the crit. That's alright, we've got enough units gathered around here that we should be able to take the hero out just the same. But before I do that, I'm going to start by taking out this white beast. And this is one range, this is two range, this would be three range. It looks like I can't quite stand there, so I'll need to pick a different space that's three range away. Oh, actually, it looks like I can reach even from here, because of the bow range plus one from the sniper class. So I'll go for the Hunter's Volley here. Got the lucky crit there. Apparently when you get a crit on the second hit of Hunter's Volley, it doesn't animate. Seems like fighting's all I do these days. Amazing. That's good. His miracle didn't even proc, so that frees up a lot of our resources to take out this enemy. We've got 26 enemies left to kill. And I won't even kill all of them. Hunter's still in that enemy's range, so that's good. Definitely took out 53, that leaves him with 30. And I can definitely get that with my Lath. I could also just go for the kill with my Lath, honestly. That might be for the best. No hesitation. There's a tiny bit of damage left to do. So I could give that to Felix, potentially, if he can hit. Enemy does have vantage here, though. So I better do it from either range or complete safety. It does have axe breaker. No, it doesn't. Okay. Then I can probably use Ferdinand here. That's all right. One more should see it done. still have one enemy Falco Knight to deal with up here, and another one to deal up here. Those are the two really big threats. We also have to deal with one of these Altered Golems on the bottom here, and our, you know, five range sniper and I think four white beasts. And then we should be good to engage Rhea once we clear out the other enemies. So I'm going to start regrouping my units more towards the left side, and I think I'll start heading up these enemy horses starting next turn. I should probably heal her with someone. Sweet of you. So I think we've managed to survive the initial rush of this map, and from here on out it should be a lot easier. I don't really want to move Petra, but I suppose I could pull the enemy a little bit closer to me. That might be somewhat beneficial, because then I can attack from the forest if I need to. Even if the enemy attacks me from two range like this. Although I guess the force won't really matter since he's magic based. Use your heads. Well, even if that hits, that's alright. Looks like some enemies are approaching from the right, but they won't catch me. 
Probably not gonna hit, but if I do, I might crit, and if I crit, I kill. So it's worth no use. keeping on trying that. Try oh, Petra's primarily there to just keep these two enemies off of the rest of my units. So on this side, one, two, three. Should be able to attack and retreat here. That'll activate these horses. Might as well use the uh, terrain that only a flyer can sit on here. And I can move my Sithia over here. And use Dark Spikes. I think I might be able to reach with Dorothea, depending on where I put her. But I'm going to want to move my Leth up here to uh, block off these enemies first, I think. 0% chance of hitting, 0% chance of hitting, so then I can move Dorothea up and blast away. It's really annoying when she has Meteor that, like, scrolling through enemies works this way. Like, in the GBA games, I think you used to be able to select a tile before a weapon or something like that. So you could avoid this sort of thing. But here we go. I just want to... Do the hit rate on him was at 62%. So I'll take the 84. So that's that. One, two, three, four. I don't think I can get Ingrid in for an attack this turn. Actually, heal burning better. Thanks so much. I probably should have left her one less HP since paranoia activates at low HP or anything less than full. I always forget how her personal skill works, and I'm kind of dumb and heal her right back up to full so that she doesn't get the full use of her five bonus damage. It's just counterintuitive to keep a unit on uh, low health. But if they happen to end up there and they have a Defiant skill, it's really nice. That's going to miss, and then no crit for me. Can we take this guy out in one hit? Don't think so. Yeah, not without a crit. We can take him out in two. Might want to do that, depending on how this goes. So, I should be able to start off with uh, blasting this guy down. It's win or die. And then I can eventually move by left here, but that will draw in this flyer, and I don't really want to do that just yet. Hit rates on the Ballista there are pretty terrible, so I'm probably better served by just attacking in range with Bernadetta. I'll do some chip damage with Ingrid here. And then I can move in with Bernadetta and try to uh, see what we can do here. Force. This is 32. I suppose I'll try it. It's not like it costs me anything if I miss. I 
I can get a free attack in with Wind Sweep here, but I think that... No, it looks like he won't actually be able to hit me. So... I could potentially do that. Don't really want to. I think I'll try attack with Ferdinand instead. One, two, three, four. Hit right there is not that good. But I guess I'll try it. I guess I might try something with Caspar here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, getting him in and out is going to be hard. If it's possible in the first place. He will survive. Although if he can't hit, he's not going to do any good. You know, he does have Axe Breaker. So let's say I were to... Well, this is still one of these enemies successfully. I could take them out with Ice Scythia then. Saw coming. It's okay. Guess I will get my asthma here. I will not die yet. Takes care of one more enemy. And then on enemy phase, we should take care of another as long as we crit. Try this with Petra, as long as I have a healer left open. My heart is still available. So here we go. Another miss. But at least he didn't hit me. I don't think there are any physic healers in range of this beast, so that damage should stick around. Let's avoid by waiting. No use. It's all instinct now. We've been fighting this enemy so long that Manuela got an S rank in white magic from it. Yes, they are in range of that beast. I've got some serious healing range there. That's gonna be a miss into a potential kill. I think I need to double crit. Even that leaves him at one. Alright. If we do a little bit of damage to this one, we'll be able to take him out. So, I think Dorothea might be able to do that with some kind of spell. I only want to go with Sejite for the accuracy. And then I can blast him with Lysithia. And then I can use Ferdinand to get this kill in all likelihood. I will see this war through. I'll put him there instead. This enemy Gremory's caught up to us pretty quickly. Might actually want to use Luna on it instead. But then I do need to find some damage to actually kill this enemy, so... What if I put Byleth down here? Looks like that'll do. Even though we didn't get the kill, he's cut off from attacking my best. weaker units. 50 speed. It's pretty good for Byleth. Thanks to all of her speed carrot, she's almost on Petra tier. I think Petra has a little bit more speed than her. 52 without speed, plus 2. So 
so I think I will pull out the Luna. Guaranteed to hit. That leaves her at 2 HP. And she has Miracle. So I'm gonna have to outrange her again in order to do this safely. Okay, with Hunter's Volley. And if I hit twice, she's guaranteed to die. Still here. Alright, so that takes care of that. Next we have to worry about the Sniper for the following turn. So I'll put Caspar over there to get ready for that. I see he's already over there, so she'll be able to reach him at 5 range 2 as well, probably. Let you know what we do with Excalibur. Alright, I'll do that. I'll do what it takes. What's it? It's another enemy Dom. And team left. And I think I have. Yeah. And Marianne and Mercedes available, so I can attempt to do a hit with Petra here. No use. One in five should hit. Keep Felix on that side in case I do need impregnable. A bunch of misses versus Petra, and a bunch of misses from Petra. It's slow, but it is safe. It's relatively safe. So, I'm gonna take off this sniper's range, and I'll put Rhea's range on. And that should give me a pretty good picture of where I'm safe to stand to take out this sniper. Looks like I can go one space further away with my Scythia. Now, if I use Luna, I could kill him in one hit. And then there's a tiny chance that he survives to the miracle and he crits me on the counter. And my Scythia. I think even if she procs Aegis, still ends up dead, so... The chances of anything bad happening here are quite low, but they do exist. I'm gonna risk it. There's a 97% chance that it gets rid of one of these big problems. I've or got no time for mercy. only more like a 70% chance. Because he has like 20 luck, probably. Miracle's got about a 20% activation rate then. I think Petra should be fine with soloing her white beast, and then we can pull the rest of our army up this way and prepare to assault. It doesn't really look like anything's going to be coming from this side, so I might be safe to leave. Either Marianne or Mercedes here to heal Petra with Physic if she needs it. I think I'll leave Mercedes because Marianne has access to silence, which could be potentially quite useful. Definitely want to keep Bernadette close by, because she'll be really helpful in taking out enemy beasts. I think I'm out of enemy range if I'm on the rooftop here.
Looks like that's out of range too. Pull the enemy even further away. These bishops have Physic and Aura, but they start with Physic equipped, so if I actually sneak up on them and hit them before they close with me, I'll be able to get in free attack on them. I'm going to try this once more. Eventually it's bound to work. Should be fine to bait these enemy beasts with my Leth here. Yep, six percent hit rate, and it won't even deal lethal damage. keep dodging, and these enemies are also going to keep dodging. Or, I guess the one Falco Knight. Yep, that's fine. It looks like that's going to draw some other enemies as well. Or it might just be this group of Physic Healers. Alright, so it's fine to be in this White Beast range as long as we kill him. Or Armor Break him. want to stay out of enemy javelin range here, though. So if I use Seraphim, I'll take a counterattack, and that'll be bad. It's not a bad way to start things off. So I'll go for... I'll leave this back tile. It seems like the hardest to get to. Yeah, it's a barrier break. From there, I should be able to barrier break the front with Bernadetta from 3 range safely. I'll go with Curve Shot. Then I do have a Grounder on Ingrid. Which I could use under cover of stun. And then it looks like if I put Wyleth here, back with Bane of Monsters, that'll get the last barrier down. Closer. And I might even crit. No crit, no problem. Still have Sage Attack uses, so I'm gonna use them. There's the first HP war down. I suppose I'll try to use this ballista to do something. 
Looks like we have pretty good odds of hitting. That gives Felix something to do that's productive. I'm with Mercedes out of enemy range here. And then... Then Hart might be able to attack with Excalibur for decent damage. I think he'll also Poison Strike. And then I think Caspar might be able to get the kill. That's good. So, taken individually, these beasts are no problem at all. But, uh... When they actually have the capacity to counterattack and they have a bunch of other enemies fighting with them, they're rather challenging to deal with. If I crit, that'll leave them on 2 HP. So, I'll go for the Killer Axe. And I think Bernadetta should be able to finish him off next turn. And I can probably use Petra. A little bit risky, so I suppose I had best not. Seeing as I already moved Mercedes. That's a little bit inconvenient. But no great issue. Should still be able to take out the beast with no problem from 3 range, because it doesn't have a 3 range counter option. It's not like they gave them counter uh, attack massive skill on maddening mode. Try to ground this enemy. There we go. We finally did it. Each battle a victory. Petra has finally won her duel. Took a while to get the enemy in range to do that with from the forest safely. We want to do this from three range. Should put in and kill range for Bernadetta once again. I think the Brave Bow will do it. Yep, as long as Miracle doesn't front. Right, we need one more hit, so good time to use Felix in the Ballista. There we go. There's a beast though with one, two, three, four, five. So I should be able to retreat here if I go for this ranged attack with Ingrid. of the range of most problematic enemies anyway. Probably don't want to clear the Pegasus Knight towards me if I can avoid it. Maybe if I use Ferdinand here I might be able to get this kill. I'll try it. Just a little bit more. Between that and the Poison Strike, that should bring her to pretty low HP. And then Caspar might be able to get the kill. Looks good. Can even get a Miracle Brock there, so that takes care of that. Or it does have a crit, which is kind of unfortunate. But I suppose I can deal with this in uh, the standard way. And that'll keep me from getting crit by that. At least this turn. 
I don't think there are that many mages left on the map to deal with, so it's not really a waste of a silence to do so. Try this with Thoron. Suppose I'm not that surprised it worked that way. I don't think I have everyone in range to deal with an enemy Falco Knight, so I better not bait it this turn. And there's the Light Breath, which is going to miss. And the Golem's approaching. So is the third enemy healer. Finally, start counterattacking this white beast with Petra because we don't have to worry about the Falco Knight anymore. Takes him pretty low. I didn't quite clear the first HP bar. All right, since this enemy altered golem is over here messing things up for me, I really probably should not be waiting in this bishop's range. I should probably wait for the bishop What's to come to me. Strategy? More fighting. So I'm going to pull these units out, so that way they don't get Ready for you know, hit by an unlucky crit Ready from the bishop and then followed up on by the golem and killed. Put me in there. Let's make this quick. I do this for all of us. I'll do my best. No use. It's fine. That healing won't be anywhere near enough to save the beast from Petra this turn. I will prevail. You are in my way. Even more Your speed and strength. My body and mind. All right, so that gets to the first HP bar. Now, as long as I don't stay in this golem's range, I should be all set to take out this enemy bishop before the bishop attacks me. So, I can start this off with either the Brave Axe or the Killer Axe. Greatness awaits me. I can follow it up with pretty much whatever I want, I think. Yep, when enemies don't have any ability to counterattack, they're pretty easy to take out. Attack at your own risk! Well, it's kind of funny that even a small enemy healer uh, pretty much takes one. a whole lineup of units teeing off on her to actually get the kill. Now, this enemy does get Swordbreaker Plus, but only after we chew through an HP bar, so I can actually put Byleth in range. Byleth should be safe. And I can also beat that Falco Knight doing this. But I definitely want to be ready to go when the time comes to fight that Falco Knight and take her out. And that positioning might be a little bit tricky with the enemy golem in the way. That's gonna miss. Yep. 
Watch and learn. Looks like the flyer's in a pretty good position for me, actually. It's from right about here. I should be able to take him out. It's not that great, but if I were to go for a Hunter's Volley using Silverbow Plus, I can get that up. And if we were to swap Dorothea's position, that would be even better. And there we go. That should do the trick. I'll get through this. Alright, only one more of those obnoxious, super speedy, super strong flying enemies to deal with. And then it's just these. We are on turn 17 here. So that does leave us with only 82 turns left to be the chapter. But that should be plenty of time, I think. So. Picking out this enemy golem is going to be a little bit tricky. I'll get started on it. Now he's stunned. So I can follow up with another Bane of Monsters. Huh. I guess I don't have that on Ingrid. I have Grounder on her. I could just blast with Lysithia through the gap with Seraphim. That looks like that would do just fine. And since the Golem won't actually double, didn't need the crit, but I'll take it. Ryleth will be safe even if she gets hit, as long as she doesn't get crit. Enemy having three range here is a little bit inconvenient. Also shoot into the gap in the enemy's armor here. At least I thought I could. Looks like he's slightly out of range, but oh. target something else then. At your service. Edra hasn't done her attack this turn. No use. With all of my might. There's another 66 damage. So, she's able to solo beasts, but it takes a while. And it's not safe to actually go in for an attack on the golem here, so I won't. That's some, uh, fake Gilgamesh-style attack right there. Here comes the beast, and there goes the beast HP. But we should be able to take off more than was healed. No use. I guess not. But we took off almost all of the HP that was restored at any rate. So I think the best play here is to once more, go for the Bane of Monsters. And if this hits, that'll put her on Defiant. My age is catching up to me. Then we can blast into the hole. Seraphim here. Actually, let me go back a space and do that. Might actually be best served by healing well Ryleth, even though having to find a void is quite nice because this enemy does still have a small chance of hitting her because I'm not using alert stance. So if I move Lysithia back a space, looks like I can't use Sarah from anywhere. Well, we might be able to do good damage with something like Hades. We can double with Miasma.
There we go, that takes care of that. Then we can use Bernadetta here. And if we pull out a Hunter's Volley with, like, the Blessed Bow, at the surprisingly little damage, maybe I'll try the Silver Bow instead. Huh. Alright, Blessed Bow it is. We do have a pretty good crit rate. So, we've almost dealt with the Golem. If we crit here, that'll be a kill. Own it? No, I think it's like one damage short of base damage, so it would have been like three damage short. Can I get this kill in before he counters me, maybe? Well, he can't kill. And I will double, and I have a pretty good crit chance. So I can risk this. Nice. If I live, I fight. I'm in There we go. That takes care of that. Now we're in a pretty good position heading into next turn. I will heal by left up to full. Just to make sure she'll survive. Petra's still fine, so Mercedes isn't needed thing. And I guess I'll start moving Felix. That's another miss. There's a small chance that would have crit. So, there are small chances for a lot of awful things to happen to you on Maddening Mode here. It's kind of unfortunate. But, at least the odds are in your favor. So I do have to watch that hero's area. But other than that, I should be in pretty good shape. So, I have Grounder, I have Bane of Monsters, I have Seraphim, and I have effective damage to Flyers thanks to Bow, and then I also have Excalibur. So I should be able to take out all of his barriers with effective uh, combat arts and such. Let's begin with that. And that did so well so far. Now there's the stun, so we'll take advantage of that and exploit it into a chain stun. Right. There's another one. Probably go for the furthest one with Lysithia. From as far away as possible. Looks like I can't reach from there, so I'll have to go up one space. So I might have to actually go for that one with Bernadetta. Great level up. Not that level ups count for much in uh, this chapter, considering I won't get to use them for very long. I think I'll go for the curb shot with the iron bow, just something simple that does a little bit of damage will do the trick here. Alright, and that opens him up to plenty of attacks for free. So, let's start with the Killer X. Didn't quite get through that HP bar. Quite alright. We have reserves. That 
gets into the third HP bar. Linhart, we can use Excalibur, I think. Alright, I'll settle for Nasiradu. And then there's Poison Strike damage. And then I think Dorothea can hit with something. Magnet's arrow has a high hit rate, so I'll use that. And then I guess I'll put Felix back on the Ballista. And I'll heal the 1 HP Lysithia is missing. And I think that'll do it. That's fine. I just should be able to get through that HP bar. Here's the counter. Probably do want to take out this hero rather than leaving him. Looks like Dorothea is in the space I want to use here, so I'll open with Magne's arrow. That gets her out of the way. And then I think Bernadetta doubling this enemy should be able to take out this beast. I'll go for the Brave Bow just in case Miracle Prox. Keep steady. So far, so good. We do have two beasts on the right side left to take out. Since I'm not going to double, I can use this last killing edge use here. Great way to break a weapon. This could turn the tides. All right, that takes care of that. We have ten enemy units left on the field. Eight knight. We got golems that we're not going to fight. Two beasts and one falco knight. Plus Rhea herself. So, let's try to get that down to 9 shortly. I guess I can't use the Killing Edge here because I'll actually be in a little bit of trouble. But I can definitely try the Rape here. It should do about as well. I'm saving Thunderbrand for Rhea. Last HP bar. We will move Mercedes out of range here. And then I think I'm going to start moving all of my units over to the right side. Probably get over to the right side with my flyers a little bit before everyone else. So I might actually have to wait up for Byleth to catch up to us unless I want to actually cut through this middle zone here, but that's a little bit risky. It might actually be possible though. I suppose I should make sure that I only have to kill one of these golems. One to three range means that I only have one space that I can attack Rhea from. But I'll get three spaces if I take out two golems. And I believe they can't come down the stairs, so these are trapped up here and I don't have to worry about them. 
but they might be able to do something about the sides if they come all the way over here. Let's see. One, two, three. Okay. It looks like that should be as many as five spaces to attack from, as long as I take out one more golem. So I should be able to do that, and then that'll give me a lot of space to work with. If I'm going to be taking out a golem, I might as well send Byleth through the center to do that. I just have to make sure I keep my evasion up so I don't get got by the Hoarfrost from the Immaculate One. And uh, she does get Surging Light, which allows her to spam her Staggering Blow every single turn, so if you don't take out all of her barriers in one go, she just refills them every turn. Well, I don't want to step into enemy range there. Going to Miss Petra. Violeth has. well, better change your weapon from the broken killing edge. That's a little better. 99 base avoids so that I can go up to 129. Which means that Horfrost should always miss. And there's like a 5% chance that the Seros Crest Stone will actually hit. So. It's 8 range. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. But uh, as long as I sit in her range with my Alert Stance buff up, I should actually be fine. Petra, the lucky crit here, might be able to take this beast out. I think she'd have to double crit. 138. I think she might need two turns no matter what. Wow, double miss. Performing a little bit below expectations there, but that's okay. Do a huge chunk of damage with Lysithia. And I can probably follow that up with the Ballista from Felix. Alright, that didn't work so well. What if I use Meteor? Looks like it's out of range. So I'll just move Dorothea then. I do have 30 resilience. I'm like 12 might and 35 magic. And the crit's a little bit worrisome. So if I can't one shot here, I probably shouldn't attack with Lysithia. And 13 more damage. Without stepping into enemy white beast's range. And I think if I attack from here, I won't be able to get out of range with Ferdinand. So it looks like I'm going to have to hold off on that. Move Marianne out of the way so that way Linhart can get closer. use my alert stance there. Uh, even if it hits, Pyleth won't die. That looks like alert stance was up, so it wouldn't have hit. Better's fine here. Even if she gets hit, she can't die. And that foolish, foolish enemy Bishop just walked right into the lion's den. So she's dead. We can try to get this kill with Petra. No use. Not 
only did she walk into my army, she also has physic equipped instead of an attack tome, so she is doubly dead. even just use Caspar here. I can use Felix to get the kill, I think. All right, next. All right, so that's that dealt with. Now, I don't think I have quite enough power close enough to actually hit this beast and break all of his barriers, but next turn I might be able to do something like that and just chip him all the way down to armor break status and then take him out. I'd probably better try to get a little bit closer with my units before that time comes. Don't want to get in Arrayus range with Marianne because of Joy-Con Rift, that would be bad. And that has like a 62% chance of hitting if I forget to use Alert Stance. Guaranteed miss, and I'm pretty sure Ray is also going to miss me. Now if I double crit, I'll get the kill, and I think if I single crit, that's also a kill. So I'm going to need a little bit of extra damage here in order to clean this enemy up. My Sithy is probably the best way to do that by outranging the enemy with Seraphim. It's not fast enough to double. So, that's not quite as easy as fighting a golem. But that does stun him, which allows me to sneak someone like Ferdinand in here. That'll be lethal if Miracle doesn't proc. Yep, Miracle procced. Uh, one more damage and he goes down. I should be able to get that safely with Bernadetta if I can get close enough. I'd also try it with Felix from the Ballista. Well, I thought I could. Apparently it's a little bit too far. Meteor will do. Will this ever end? I can't Meteor Rhea, so it's not really that much of a waste of a Meteor if I'm running out of enemies to use it on. And then we will proceed onward and forward into the monastery. heals to do that rather than my physics. I'm going to be seeing this animation a few more times than I wish I had to, I'm sure. Right. Gravex is going to miss twice in a row. And then here comes the counter. Nice. Keep up the crits. Since we took out their healers, that damage is going to stick. I'll buy a last kill on enemy phase there. I could potentially bait with Ingrid. It might be for the best to uh, do that with someone a little bit more resilient.
Earth Day or Linhar probably the best choices. Or actually the best choice is Petra. If I can get her close enough. Also, let's just wait at the very edge of his range. So that way when the Pegasus Knight decides to come for us because we baited the uh, enemy there and it's part of the group, we'll be ready for it. Or readier anyway. Actually, does an AoE heal on the enemies in range? Predictable. Allow me to demonstrate. And there's the counter. If I get one more crit, that'll be a kill. Oh, that's all right. Always have next turn. Now he's running away from me. <laughs> Why does he feel the need to do that? I think I scared him. But if I go. Over here. And that'll draw the uh, Falco Knight, though. So I better be prepared for that if I'm going to do that first, and I don't think I am because the Falco Knight does have a small chance of hitting me, so I better leave Byleth where she is. And I'll just have her take out the Great Knight. And I will wait for Petra to get into position before baiting the Falco Knight. Scythian Tarthia at the edge of range here, along with Bernadetta. Miss. Double miss. <laughs> And here's the kill. It's over. It won't be in vain. There's still no point in actually engaging Rhea herself because she has uh Huh. Oh, where is it? Oh, it must be over here. Divine Dragonhorn. She recovers 100% of her HP at the start of every turn if there's a white beast within 10 spaces, which both of these are. So I do have to take them out before engaging her, otherwise it's just a waste of time. I think that if I go right there... Because Petra has such high avoid, I should actually be safe. Might be better to bait from a little further away if I can still get the Pegasus Knight. Might also be a little bit safer if I do it one at a time. I'll try it. Hopefully the Pegasus Knight doesn't decide to ambush me. And then I will move my other units a little bit closer to provide a little bit better support. as far as here, but no further. And there's no chance of that hitting me. Because the enemy hit rates are not particularly powerful, even on maddening mode.
unfortunately I've sort of stuck myself in a position where if I go and attack this white beast, this enemy golem will be able to attack my units, and I can't get in and out safely. So I'm gonna have to pull back a little bit here. What's my strategy? I can just leave Byleth right where she is, that'll be fine. But the rest of the units over here are in a little bit of trouble, I think. So this unit has five move, one, two, three, four, five, plus two range. You'd have to move them back to here. Let's make this quick. Unless I build like a wall of them. Ready for anything. I'm awake. Put me in there. Ready when you are. I do this for all of us. More fighting. I will prepare. I'll do my best. There, I should pull him a little bit closer. Of course, that's going to miss. No use. Oh, I should at least be able to attack from one direction without provoking ire. Nope, looks like I didn't pull him far enough away yet. Let's see, he's here, so this is one space, that's two spaces. I don't want to pull him at least that far. I think that should be fine. Finally in range. We'll just keep buffing by less avoid here. And now that we can actually get to his front, we should be in pretty good shape. Now I'm going to want to use Seraphim with Lysithia and some kind of an attack with Bernadette to hit these back two spaces in order to break the barrier, but from the front, I think I can do a combat art like Bane of Monsters here. And that'll break one barrier as long as it hits. And then I can follow that up with Ingrid with a Grounder. Which is pretty good odds of hitting and Chain Stunning. And then I think I can pull out Scythia this way now. 100% chance of hitting the Seraphim. And then... Bernadetta. Looks like I'll have to use a curved shot. Oh, we can still guarantee a hit. There we go, armor break. Now... I can attack from range with Dorothea here. Sagitae still has a bunch of uses, so I'll start with that. And there goes one HP bar. And it would probably be for the best if I do as much damage as possible while he can't counterattack me. Sneak Caspar in there for a little bit of damage. And we might be able to sneak in Felix or Ferdinand as well. Seems a little bit wasteful. But definitely is more surefire than the Killer Axe. So I'll try it with the Rave Axe here. We're on the last HP bar. And then I think Linhart with something like Cutting Gale or Excalibur will do pretty decent. I'll go with Cutting Gale. And 
damage, the poison strike. Don't need an impregnable here. And no one's in real need of healing either. It's Ryleth's ready to go, we just gotta clean up the rest of these enemies here so that we can actually start taking shots at the boss without all the damage being healed. Can't waste weapon durability here. So, 116 hit points to chew through. I think if we start with Bernadetta, we can put a huge set in that with something like the Inexhaustible or the Brave Bow. So, there we go, 88 hit points. And then, probably Blast with Lysithia. Might also be able to use some kind of an effective combat art with someone else. A little bit light on damage there. We want to save the monster Bane, honestly. So, he's got 28 HP and potentially a Miracle, so it's best to attack from range. So, I think Lysithia with Seraphim's a fine choice. So we wanted it from a little further away. It's overkill, so maybe I don't need to use it. You lost that one. Alright, takes care of that. Now I can beat all of the remaining enemies on the map. Um it's probably not a wise choice. So, if I can pull the golem over here... I should have enough offensive power over here that between various hit and runs and magic blasts and combat arts, we should be able to either take out the golem or very narrowly take out the golem. As much as I would like to contribute with my Leth, I don't think it would be safe to do so. Well, my left will do just fine drawing the Boss's fire for us. No chance. But look at that damage. It's pretty scary. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to survive that kind of damage without banking on evasion. Because, like, I don't think the dude would be able to have enough defense or even Linhart can get enough resistance to just shrug that off very easily. Especially considering Linhart has such low HP. So if I use a Monster Bane... That puts me in a good position. Chain stun him, potentially. No use. He missed with the Lance of Light there, so I don't need to heal Petra. I do have a whole bunch of healers waiting. So I think we don't have any effective combat arts, really. We do have some pretty good ranged options. So if I move Lysithia over here and attack with Seraphim, that'll definitely take out an HP bar. We might even be able to do a similar amount of damage with Dorothea. I should probably use Thoron from back here. That way I don't sort of hog the one available spot that's really good. It's kind of a waste of a stun. Uh, it looks like there's no risk for Ferdinand if I do this. So I'll do it. I will not back down one step. So there's the first bar. And now he's Swordbreaker. Which is not ideal. 
for poor Petra, who's probably going to get totally blasted. And if I take another HP bar, he'll also get Lance Fair. So that's not something I really want to do. Because that will get Petra killed if I do that. So what I'd really ought to do is try to break barriers rather than go for the kill here, unless I can guarantee that I get this kill. And I don't think I have the offensive power to do that. I can probably get in for a little bit of damage with Ingrid here, and then follow that up with a Seraphim. Yep, this is fine. The situation is dire. As long as I pull her out of range. I don't think this enemy will even double cast bar. It's kind of a rarity. Cast bar actually doubles it, so the golems are quite slow, which is the one good thing about them. I could take the 50 damage, but it would sure hurt. I don't think I'd really benefit all that much. Guess I'd only have to break one more square. I'll go for it. stuns him. Means I could potentially sneak another attack in there. It's probably best to uh, play it a little bit safe here. Now this will do zero damage because he has anti-magic, but I wonder if it'll actually impact the barrier at all. I suspect it may not. I suppose I'll just wait then. That's going to miss. That might hit, and if it hits, it's going to hurt. Yep. But Petra is still alive. That's the important thing. That was a little bit risky. I just didn't heal Prox, which heals her up a little bit. So I do need to break these two barriers without provoking a whole bunch of enemies here if I'm going to actually deal with this golem. I suppose the alternative is to not deal with the golem. And that might be a fine choice too. Just to actually take my time, take out the white beast, and then go back for him later. He's down an HP bar, he's not going to recover that. But it might be for the best if I decide to make a little bit of an aggressive play here and like throw tomahawks at him. And then follow up with Lysithia and get the kill. But then I might need to use an impregnable in order to protect everyone. I think I should be able to run away with Ferdinand. So that much is fine. It's putting my Sithy in danger, that's the tricky bit. Now I do have quite a few combat arts that would potentially take this white beast's barriers down. So I've got Phantom Monsters, I've got a Grounder, I've got Bernadetta, so I just need one more effective combat art. Or two attacks. And I could get those from like Aspar and Dorothea potentially. Linhart with a 
cutting hill potentially as well. So I might be able to armor break him. Although it would be a little bit risky. Well, I'll try this anyway. I will not hold back. Nice. Yeah! Now he does have Lance Fair, which means if he hits Petra again, he will kill her. So that means that it is probably in my best interests to kill this enemy before that becomes a problem. And also to get Ferdinand out of range of the White Beast. So, if I just lay Scythia from 4 range... I should put her right here. I think I can use Seraphim, and I won't quite get the kill, but I'll get really close. Yeah. And then I guess I could heal Ingrid and leave her within this enemy white beast range to cut off attacks on my Scythia. It looks like I would have to leave her in Falco Knight range, so that's probably not a good choice. Can I get the Golem kill with Caspar? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Should be able to get out. Doesn't have vantage. This is safe. Yeah! Then I'll pull him out and put him next to Lysithia. Not sure which orientation is best, but I think I'll try this one because then I could potentially put like Ingrid here and then sneak. He likes behind Lysithia and using Impregnable. So I'm going to use Mercedes's Physic in order to bring Ingrid up. Or Petra. Thank you. I use Marianne to bring the other one up. Save me. That should keep them both out of kill range. From there, I can also use Linhardt if I need to. There's no real point in uh, attacking the White Beast and trying to get his barrier down. If I'm going to be playing defensively here, so I think I will Ready pick Ingrid, put her in the way, or even Petra. I'll even equip her with a short spear so she gets the chance to counter. And her evasion is now 86, so she probably won't be hit. And I can put Petra right here. And combined, that should draw this enemy a little bit away from attacking anyone potentially who I do not want to be attacked. Apologies. And then I'll use an impregnable, and that'll keep both of these units safe. And I'll heal Ingrid all the way up to full. And I guess I'll just wait on standby until next turn. I'll buff my last defense. Yep, we know, or frost misses. So it looks like he attacked Ingrid and hit. I skipped the whole turn instead of just the Horfrost animation there, but that's fine. Not that much happened. So I could use Seraphim. It's safe to just attack with Petra as long as I heal her. So I'll go for the Grounder. 
as long as she doesn't get hit. Everything's just fine. That stuns, so then we can move into a chain stun. I think I need to use Bernadetta to hit this space. I think that also puts her in uh, enemy Falco Knight range, so I'll have to move her to where Caspar currently is. Means I should probably move Caspar. I'll start with a grounder. And I will pull Ingrid out of enemy range here. I guess if I armor break him, it doesn't really matter if I have to use the Seraphim to get it done, because I'll have a whole turn worth of damage to do. If I go from right here, and I curve chat with an iron bow, I think I can guarantee a hit on this back tile. That breaks the barrier. Iron bow well spent. And then we just need to break one more. And I think I can sneak in there and cutting gale. Oh, but I could Nosferatu and then do something with Dorothea and follow up with a Seraphim. So, Nosferatu's are more expendable. And we get a Poison Strike damage in there as well. There we go, safely takes up the barrier. And he's armor broken. And there we go, the last beak is, uh... About ready to go down. So I think I can open this with Aspar. I don't think I can do much better than the Iron Axe here, so I'll go for it. Except the HP bar, so that's fine. From there I should be able to use Seraphim. I'll knock out almost half the HP bar, or a little more than it actually. I can use Ferdinand. I think I can pull him back. One, two, three, four, five, so I have three spaces. Should be plenty. With the Brave Axe we can get this kill. We don't even need the Brave Axe. Iron Axe will do. Curve chat, so I'm not actually going to be able to trade Felix a bow so he can get in on the action here. Which means that I'm going to heal Petra and that should be the end of the turn. That's my last Physic. Yeah. Well, that's alright. Marianne served me well with her silences all throughout this chapter. That's a miss. Let's turn the tables. We'll that might hit, but it's not lethal, one way or another. And that also gets that Falconite a little bit closer, which is both very bad and very good. Because I can attack it, but it also means I don't have any way of escaping it. I think Bernadetta can take it out. Not guaranteed, but if I were to use, let's say, a Hunter's Volley with a Silver Bow, we can get pretty close. There we go. Still here. So, in Maddening Mode, the Sniper class is quite good, mostly due to Hunter's Volley, ignoring the speed penalties because uh, having 30 speed is really underwhelming in maddening mode. You need like 50 speed in order to reliably double most enemies here. Or I guess all enemies, except for the Falco Knights. 
So if I use Lysithia and Seraphim here, we can do a huge chunk of damage. And then Petra can kill. Well, the white beast got Petra before he got got. I work to grow. You're relentless. Oh, we can negate that. Thank you. Inspired. And now, as you can see, those golems are trapped up there. They can't reach anything, so. It's the Petra and Byleth show. I might be able to sneak other units in here as well, but I'm going to have to be more careful with that. Absolutely everyone's amazement, it missed. I'm actually going to keep the rapier equipped, and I'm not going to attack the wall. And I'm going to wait so that way Pedra's avoid stays high. Now let's see if, uh, Saros will actually destroy us or not. She does have crit. Not good. So Ferdinand is out. Caspar is definitely out, because he gets doubled. We have quite a few supportive units, that'll be just fine though. Let's see about Lysithia. I suspect that she'll get blasted. Oh yeah, she also gets doubled. So she's out. Looks like it is going to be the Petra and Byleth show. It would be really good if I could get in there and bust open one of those barriers with a gambit. Or if I could get all of them. But it looks like that's going to be a little bit tricky. And because of the way she's positioned, I can't get two units on like one side of uh, one of these things. So in order to actually double team a barrier, it's not possible with the current equipment I have. I'd have to switch to like a Levin Sword. That might be worth doing. Although even then, that's not going to be quite good enough. I'd need like some kind of ranged blessed weapon or a ranged combat art with a blessed weapon and then a brave weapon in order to really make full use of things here. Going to miss. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do to sneak in a little bit of extra damage here, which is probably not going to be worth it. I'm going to warp Ingrid right into the enemy's range here. But first, I'm going to use Felix, find him. Here he is. I give her impregnable. At your service. So that way she actually only takes one damage. Thanks. That really helped. Then I'm going to go into the convoy. 
And I'm going to, you know, not use any of these pretty good weapons. I'm going to use something a little bit silly. So I have this Blessed Lance that has Wonder ability. And I'm going to attack Rhea with this Blessed Lance. And that should break a barrier even though it only does one damage. And it'll also break the Blessed Lance. That'll be fine. Doesn't matter if she crits me, I've got Impregnable on. There we go. And there we go, we got a broken barrier, so now I'm going to run screaming as far away as possible with Ingrid, which gets me just out of her range. And that actually allows me to go in here with Petra and use Thunderbrand. And the boss can't hit me, and I can do 80 damage. Which is much better than I otherwise would be able to, because I think Byleth has a similar level of attack. 54 versus 70. Okay, maybe not so much. What's my strategy? But She'd only do three damage with each swing of her Braze Forward plus, which is uh, no good. So, being able to do 20 with a swing is much better. that because Petra doesn't have a crest, the Thunderbrand actually did some damage to her, so I might want to swap the Brave Sword off of Petra and onto my left here. Or the uh, Thunderbrand. And then I can do 4 damage instead of 3 damage here, although I could get hit and I could get killed. But the odds of it happening are quite low. Something on the order of 2%. We are almost through the first HP bar, and we need to throw some healing around. I'm awake. Thank you. And there we go, we managed to actually break one barrier and get some damage in. Now, if I can come up with a clever way to do that repeatedly, this boss should go down pretty quickly, otherwise it's going to be kind of a slog of me doing very small amounts of damage very repetitively. I'll do my best. I'm grateful. Should miss. And the barriers are back up. So, if I go into the convoy and I pull out the Sublime Creator Sword, I believe Sublime Heaven might have two range. And that should enable me, if I'm correct, and this is effective against dragons, to allow Petra to do good damage here, although I'll only be able to do this a couple of times. But that allows me to sort of combo attack here. So I'll go for it. And hope that she doesn't crit me on the counter. Alright, so far so good. Now Petra can get in there with the Brave Sword Plus, and slice and dice. A little bit overkill with the Brave Sword Plus. Definitely don't want to use the Silver Lance, but uh, the Rapier might be appropriate here because she doesn't have Miracle, which means that the Brave Sword would just be overkill and would use up some uh, pretty good actual potential damage. So go for the Rapier. Nice crit. There goes her first HP bar. Now, what I could do if I wanted to stall and make this safer is pull both Petra and Byleth out to the edge here and get out of enemy range and then apply a blessing to them. I'd have to make sure that I keep 
Put me in. I mean, it's pretty far out of range, so that way the AoE from Horfrost doesn't hit them and kill them. Ready for anything. That might actually do that if I do get an unlucky crit and have to like rewind or something. But for now, I'm happy with the way that things are currently progressing. Thank you. And I'll take the small risk of being crit. And there's another Horfrost, and it should miss. I think there's a very small chance that it could hit either Byleth or Petra at this point. 104 hit, 102 avoid, 123. Okay, so it can actually hit Byleth 2% of the time and has a small chance of critting. So it's something like 0.2% of the time she'll actually get crit and die, which I don't expect will happen in the next few turns. That broke her barrier once more. Once more into the gap. So, busting her barrier multiplies my damage here by about 5. Whereas if I just were to attack with like Thunderbrand and a Brave Sword, my damage would be twice whatever my base damage would be with like a brave sword so this is probably the fastest way of doing this at least with two units with the limited supplies for breaking barriers that I do have or I should probably miss and since the final boss can't even hit me it's just a matter of uh, not getting hit on the relatively high accuracy counters and chipping down her HP. There goes another barrier. And into the gap once more. I could have used the rapier here potentially, but the Brave Sword doesn't even let her counterattack. So there's a small reason to use it there instead. And there we go. There's another bar down. On to next turn. And there's another Horfoss, which is gonna miss. I really wish they showed you the hit rates on the AoE, stuff like that, but apparently they don't. And then I think this might be my last Sublime Heaven. So... Let's make it count. Then once more we can go into the gap with the Brave Sword. So 100 HP and another HP bar to go. She also has Defiant Strength, which will bump her attack power up to 50 against Petra, and I think about the same against Byleth. And as much as I would like to do some extra damage with anyone else, they'll just get destroyed by the counterattack. And the Horfrost is going to miss again. And I am completely out of combat arts to use here. And I will actually do anything impactful. I think I have Flayed on Strike, maybe? Nope. So, I'll just have to swing in with Thunderbrand for 16 damage. And 
I have no chance of critting here either. And then with the Brave Sword, I'll do 20 damage instead of 80. with another brave attack. And thank goodness that I remembered that I had Sublime Heaven, because otherwise I would have been doing this for a few more turns. I can actually break the barrier here with the Sublime Creator Sword, but that won't really accomplish anything. So Thunderbrand it is. On to the next turn. You will not be forgiven. And the Horfrost Mystic in. And you know what? I can play the game from this perspective from now on, I think. <laughs> so, here's a Brave Sword. And I think if we use Thunderbrand, we'll get the HP bar and we'll be on the last one. HP more of the last boss in the whole game, and it gets Vantage. Let's see, we've got 199 hit points to go through. And two Sword Masters to do it with. How's our durability look? Grave Sword's doing pretty well. Thunderbrand, I've got two turns, three turns left on it. The Grave Sword, I've got I believe Four turns left. And I definitely don't want to use a broken weapon against this boss because that will probably get me killed, so I'll have to stop a little bit before they actually break. And there's the miss for the Horfrost again. Swinging in the Thunderbrand. Then we have Petra, and we can swing in with Grave Sword. the Horfrost. This will be your end. And it missed. And here we go again.
And it miss again. And I think this might be our last time. Yep, so that's it for Thunderbrand. Time to go into the convoy for a different weapon. Devil Sword actually doesn't have that much might. It's about equal to a Silver Sword plus, I think. So, let's just swing with the Silver Sword here. The damage won't be anywhere near as good. It will be safe to use. Got 124 hit points left to go. 120. I got plus 5 damage and it only added 1 to all of her defenses. I've got 2 more turns of this Brave Sword with Petra. This should take it down to 100 HP. Which means we're halfway through the last HP bar. Slowly cutting our way through it with swords. And here comes the Horfrost, and there it goes. And here's another attack with a Silver Sword for 6 damage. And this is, I think, the final round of attacks with a Brave Sword. No use. Seventy-four HP to go. We're doing pretty well against the Horfroth attacks, which she feels the need to spam here. They haven't hit us yet. Vantage is fine. Even with Vantage and Defiant Strength and Miracle, she won't have any chance of killing us unless she crits. And she has to hit before she does that, and she's probably not going to do that. Now the Rapier is 5. Something a little better in the convoy, maybe? I can't use the Killing Edge, won't use the Brave Sword. Oh, so right here it is. But at least the boss has a 0% chance of hitting Petra now, because the right here is lighter. Which means that Petra literally can't be killed by the final boss because avoid tanking is fair and balanced. And that's gonna miss. And we're just gonna continue slowly cutting the enemy to death here. Three to five hit points at a time. Horfrost again, and of course it missed. What must Rhea be thinking of this fight? Like, she just keeps breathing fire at us and shooting giant beams of light at us and she can't hit. And meanwhile, we're just hitting her with wet noodles. So even Defiant Strength isn't enough to one-shot, so that's good. And Horfrost missed again. To everyone's amazement. I'm gonna have to replace this Silver Sword soon. I believe next turn I should be able to get this kill. Yeah. 
And the Horfrost will miss again. And I think that's the last Horfrost she's going to get to do. So, I think I have taught my student Petra as well as they possibly can, and it is time to finally see what I have taught her in terms of the sword. No use. She gets the honor of the final hit on Rhea here on Maddening Mode, and she levels up. And there we go. That's it. I beat Maddening Mode. I get a yellow title screen. Yay. The final boss is really quite a slog if you uh, don't have quite the right preparations for it. And being able to survive either requires some kind of really powerful units or degenerate strategies or really strong tools like Blessing. So it's sort of more of a test of endurance than anything else. The first part of the chapter is really good, though, because they put an awful lot of offensive pressure on you. I think it's pretty enjoyable.